Hi there, I'm Chris Rubens. And I'm Greg Hill. Today we're here at Revelstoke Mountain Resort to practice an avalanche scenario. Avalanche skills are just the same as anything else in life. You need to practice for that worst case scenario. We spent a lot of time early season going through scenario, practicing our skills. Yeah, and this video should not replace real hands-on training. You must take a course from a certified avalanche professional. So we've set up a relatively simple avalanche scenario here. We got a life-size dummy. We got a few clues on the surface. We're in really safe non-avalanche terrain while we do this. And we got trees on either side to establish the parameter of where the avalanche theoretically went. The idea is that three of us were skiing together. We skied to here, stopped in a nice safe spot and watched the first skier go down. You can see his tracks there. Once he hit the roll, he was engulfed by an avalanche and disappeared. So that's the last scene point is that roll. All right, let's dive into this avalanche scenario. Johnny's skiing down. We see an avalanche break around him. The first thing we're gonna do is yell, avalanche! You yell avalanche because Johnny's skiing down and he might not know what's happening behind him. And when he hears avalanche, he'll look back, he'll see it, and ideally he'll just ski away from it. It also gets the group around, making sure they get eyes on him and get that last seen point because that eliminates a lot of terrain right off the bat. If you're like Johnny and you're caught in an avalanche, there's a few things you can do to help yourself out. Once you're in it, if you can aim at a 45 degree angle to ski out of it, that might help. If that doesn't work and you're actually starting to get moved by the avalanche and you're wearing an airbag, you can pull your airbag and that'll float you up on top and ideally save you. Once you're in the debris and things are moving with you, get rid of your poles. If you can knock your skis off, that's great. Cause the next thing you want to try to do is you want to try to swim. Swim and keep yourself up. If you start actually tumbling, try to remember which way is up like you would in the ocean if you're in the waves and just keep on swimming up and moving and moving. Once the avalanche starts to slow down, you really want to focus on creating an airspace because that's going to give you valuable air time while your friends are searching for you. You just move your hands, push the snow away, try to get your head in by your arm here and pushing it away. Just trying to really create some space for you to breathe during the minutes your friends are searching for you. Before we get into rescuing Johnny, we want to make sure that we as rescuers are safe and that there's nothing left above that could come down and hit us while we're rescuing him. So the next step kind of changes with scenario with group size, but ideally you want to establish a group leader. Doesn't necessarily have to be the most experienced person, but maybe the most calm person in that moment. This is also a great time if you have enough people to call in the rescue, call that local emergency number or get on a radio, get help out there as soon as possible. So we've established that the scene is safe. We know Johnny's last scene point and we've made Greg the leader. Yep, yeah, so let's uh, ski down to where Johnny disappeared. We've skied down to the last scene point. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna pull out our beacons and put them on search. And you wanna visually do it so that you can check each other, because if you're stressed, you might not have done what you think you did. <laughs> Perfect. Now that we're both on search and we're not picking up Johnny's beacon, we have to figure out how we're gonna search this avalanche path and find Johnny as quick as possible. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna send Chris off on a hasty search where he's looking for poles, skis, gloves, or an ideally Johnny. And I'm making sure that I pick up those poles, pick up those skis, because Johnny might be attached to it and that in that case, I don't need a probe. I can just start shoveling right away. Really important to eliminate the train as I go down. So I sent Chris off on his hasty search. Meanwhile, I want to do a more thorough search in case he misses something. So I'm going to look at the avalanche and I'm going to figure out how to strategically zig and zag my way down it to cover the whole area. And the distance between my zigs and zags, I don't want to be bigger than 40 meters. That way I will efficiently eliminate all the terrain working my way down the slope. So it's also really important during these scenarios to be super vocal with your partners. So right now I'm gonna lift this pole out, check it. Greg, I checked this pole, nothing here. Hey Greg, I got a signal, 30 meter. Okay, Chris, I'll come and join you. Once Chris got the signal, we could leave everything behind and go straight to Johnny. So I got Johnny's signal. I'm yelling to Greg the numbers. At this point, I'm moving pretty fast. I'm at 30 meters. My next kind of decision-making point is 10 meters. 
Right now I'm focusing on moving fast and I don't want my beacon moving around like this, following the arrows. I want that arrow always in the center and I'm moving my body with it. So this is kind of attached to my body. But right now I'm just trying to get as f close to Johnny as possible, as quick as possible. 30, 29, 25. Okay, I'll get my probe and shovel out, Chris, you do a fine search. All right, so now we're in the five to 10 meter range. And until this point, we're moving pretty fast. We're still on our skis. In the five to 10 meter range, we want to take our time, get our skis off, stack them nicely so we don't lose them. And this is the point where everything slows down a bit. Okay, so now we're into the fine search and this becomes very important that the orientation of your beacon does not change. So no turning it this way, no turning it that way, just keeping it nice and steady. The other thing is we're slowing down, but we're getting right down to the snow. Two, 1.6, 1.3, 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and I'm out to one. I'm gonna make a mark. I'm gonna come back to my lowest point, the 0.7 right here, and I'm gonna go out this way. Out to one, make another mark. Out on this side, I'm out to one again. This is my lowest point and I wanna mark it. Preferably I'm gonna mark it with goggles, toque, just not your gloves. I wanna keep my gloves on at all times. And this mark here, this is where I start my probing. So while Chris is doing the fine search, I'm gonna get the rest of my equipment ready. I'm gonna get out my probe and shovel, which are easily accessed and quick to get to. Probes are great, they're just like tent poles. You, you grab onto one end, you throw them out, you shake them. And that's ready. Once it's ready, I'll throw it over to Chris. And I'll get my shovel out. Okay, so we got our lowest Point we reached on our beacon mark with my goggles and that's the first place I'm gonna probe. Now probing technique is super important. Chances are you're not gonna get a hit on the first thing. So a methodical approach to probing is super important. I personally like a cinnamon bun approach. It's about 20 centimeters apart each time and you just kind of work your way out. A lot of people these days are using the square. Whatever it is, whatever you like the best, you need to practice with that. The other thing that's really important about a probe is making sure it goes into the slope perpendicular every time. We don't want the probe going this way and this way because by the time we're two meters down, that's a huge area that we're missing. Methodical probing will find someone really quickly. And our biggest indication that we're gonna hit someone is a change in depth. Hey, Greg, I got a probe strike. Once you get a probe strike, you leave it in because that's where you know to dig too. I'll go about a meter downhill and I'll start shoveling. And shoveling's not like, like this. Shoveling is you get down on your knees, you chop it up like this and you, you kind of paddle it back. Chop, 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 pow, chop, 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 pow. And ideally Chris at some point will come behind you. Hey Greg, I'm here to help. And he'll start conveyor, conveyor belt the snow away. Chop, chop, chop. Oh, I got an arm. Get, get to the airway, Greg! You're gonna get tired digging, Chris. I need a break. Can you go front? Yeah, here we go. Arm, looking for his face here. Got his face open. Clearing his airway. He's gotta get some snow off his chest here. Hey, Johnny, you all right, buddy? We got you, man. Oh, he's breathing, he's breathing. Let's get him out slowly. Okay, Johnny, we're gonna move you here. Greg, you got C-spine? Yeah, got his yeah. head. You call it. Okay, on three, let's move. One, two, three. So now that we've got Johnny out, we're gonna make sure that he's as warm as possible. And then we gotta figure out his injuries and then how we're gonna save him and extract him and get him to medical help. Because of that kind of conveyor belt, we got a nice big flat area. We can get him warm, we can get him that first aid. And it's kind of our chance to Take a breath and uh, hopefully Johnny's all right. High five, Johnny.
You can imagine how stressful an avalanche would be if it happened, especially if your loved one was caught in it. So what a lot of us do is we have a list, a self-rescue avalanche plan in our bags so that we can follow something, that it'll give us something in case we're too stressed to think properly, something to follow. Greg, Johnny, and myself would really like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. That was a relatively simple avalanche scenario, but you can tell it's quite complicated. And the only way to gain these skills is by practice. Yeah, and take a course with an avalanche professional so you know how to react in the right way when it happens. And then keep practicing those skills because you can never be as good as you want to be. And if you have any questions after watching this, put them in the comment box and we'll do our best to answer them. Make sure you subscribe to the Solomon YouTube channel and follow us on all the socials. Yeah, play safe, have fun, and we'll see you somewhere in the mountains.